Hello and welcome to the third episode of Lions in the Field. I'm James Carnell, along with my co-host, Amy Trober, are excited to bring to you the latest news, notes, and feature stories of our alumni and how they're impacting the world for the cause of Christ. James and I both are blessed to work in the alumni office where we interact with thousands of lions in the field who are trained to succeed in vocational ministry or marketplace ministry right here at SAGU. These shows will keep you informed and connected to all the important highlights and stories that define the Southwestern family. Today, we take a look at an alum from the Digital Media Arts Department, the same department that co-produces this show. 2011 graduate Tim Roberts is currently a lead marketer for the city of Mansfield. And in his spare time, he works as a color commentator for the Sagu Sports Network. As one of the early members of this program, he helped produce Sagu cinema movies such as Breaking News and Murdoch. This is his pride profile. They say to see an opportunity, we must be open to all thoughts. Nothing could be more true for our alum, Tim Roberts. Well, I wanted to go into journalism actually out of high school and I was very much committed uh, to a school that was not SAGU and just through a really a bizarre set of circumstances, I discovered that SAGU was starting a communications program because up until 2007, they had not started a proper digital media communications program uh, I came up to Waxahachie for a visit. Uh, Rob Price, you know, fresh onto the scene at that point, took me to an empty classroom and said by September there will be 10 IMAX in this room. And for some reason I believed him. There wasn't as much Uncle Rob back in the day. It was a little, a little dicier. He, he still had kids who were like six years old, so he came in a little grumpier. You know, he had to take that out on us. Now his kids are all grown and fine, and he's, he's Grandpa Rob. Uh, <laughs> Today, Roberts works as a lead marketer for the city of Mansfield. He's faithfully married and has a child, but has figured out how to manage life in media. Other people get to go cover city council meetings, bond elections, taxes. I get to talk about, you know, music festivals, celebrations, and, uh, you know, a lot of sports tournaments too, so that's a lot of fun. Luckily, with my current position, there's a really great work-life balance uh, here in the city, uh, and they very much respect, uh, respect all that. Um, one of the reasons I got out of TV news and it essentially was you don't have a work-life balance and it's an amazing field. It's a blast to be in, but eventually you're like, okay, it's, it, you have to make a choice in life uh, because it is overwhelming. Uh, but yeah, if I was still working TV news in Dallas right now, it'd be a very different conversation because when a tornado hits at 2 a.m., that's where you are, whether the kid's been up all night or not. Tim Roberts was a foundational DMA student. He stuck with a growing program so that students today would have access to bigger and better things. The best thing about being at SAGU is, I mean, early on, we were, we were shooting on some equipment that belonged in a prior century. Uh, we were not working with the best uh, gear at all, but that taught you how to work. It taught you how to overcome challenges, and the classes were small enough that you were able to do everything. So don't ever become a gatekeeper of, of the way things are. It moves so quickly now. Uh, technology moves so much faster. Keep, keep learning. Keep learning when you're in school, and the moment you're out of school, keep learning <laughs> even more because the people, there's people right behind you, and, and they will catch you. Young people run things now, and they will just say, hey, you don't know what you're doing. You're, you're, you're still doing things on pen and paper. It's time to move on. So, yeah. Southwestern Assemblies of God University will be hosting its annual golf classic on October 24th. It will be held at Walnut Creek Country Club in Mansfield, Texas. Last year, participants raised $40,000, which went towards our new batting cages and football stadium. This yearly event is a time of golf and fellowship and greatly benefits the SAGU athletic program. The course is filled with donors, coaches, and athletes that compete on the links while raising money for the flights and travel expenses for each team. Athletic Director Jesse Godding is seeking volunteers to help the tournament run smoothly. If you're interested, please email golfclassic at sagu.edu or contact him at jgodding at sagu.edu. This past spring, the Sagu Digital Media Art students produced a short 45-minute film called Follow the Money. The film follows a newly widowed grandmother 
and her grandson who must track down a package with thousands in cash sent to a cybercrime scammer. Hundreds turned out to watch the premiere in the Hagee Auditorium at the end of the spring 2022 semester. Here's a look at the trailer. Grandma, you got scammed. I refunded myself too much and I had to send some of it back. Hold up. How much? 20,000. Through the mail? I just want the package, man. Hey, hey, hey! Why are you driving like a crazy person? Ted always did the driving. I don't know what I'm doing. We've got to stop that package. Are they going to get my money back? It's past the cancellation dead point, and there's really nothing we can do. They can't stop the shipment because it's already been shipped. They don't have enough evidence to seize the package. Why don't we just seize it ourselves? What are you two doing? After the break, we'll show you part three of our Legacy Lions conversation with Dr. Delmer Gwines, plus an update on what's in store for Savelle Hall this summer. Stay with us. If you love saving money, listen up. During the Scratch and Save Loan event at Assemblies of God Credit Union, you can get up to 2% off your auto, motorcycle, RV, or watercraft loan. This includes new and used vehicles. Or refinance your loan from another lender to save. Visit us online at agcu.org to learn more. Loan term affects minimum APR, subject to credit approval and membership eligibility requirements. Certain exclusions apply. Contact us for complete details. Offer ends September 30th. AGCU is a not-for-profit organization. During Dr. Delmer Gwine's tenure of presidential leadership at SAGU in the 80s and early 90s, the university shifted from near financial insolvency to thriving prosperity. Enrollment soared from 516 enrolled students to over 1,700. Academic credentials expanded from a four-year college to a fully accredited university that offers master degree programs. Most importantly, this campus had a newfound spiritual passion. What made the difference? Let's take a look with part three of our Gwines interview. Uh, Brother President, let me just say what tremendous leadership that you provided uh, for this university. Leadership, first and foremost, in the spiritual dynamic. That is without question, the great leadership you provided. So it was not by accident. Of course, I've learned this through the years. God doesn't do anything by accident, but it's through His divine providence that you were here. I remember when you came as, quote, the missionary in residence. And what a great blessing to uh, have you then to assume the leadership of the college. And, and there the honest are- honest truth is, let me tell you what the, what the dynamic was. The school was in a difficult situation at that particular time for reasons that are beyond discussion at this point. And, and it was a difficult time. We didn't, we didn't quite know how to, to get hold of this and, and handle it, but, but Sister Joyce Bridges, mm -hmm. the wife of the chairman of the board and the district superintendent of the North Texas district, it was her thought, her view, said, why can't we bring prayer teams to the campus and just make all this a matter of prayer? We structured a program of bringing groups in from anywhere they would come from. They'd come in, spend the day in prayer, attend chapel, we'll feed you lunch, uh, but spend a day and just travel around the campus. And we tried to structure it so they paid a visit to various places. But then out in the districts, I would go out for meetings in district councils and uh, all of a sudden there'd be a great, great spirit of prayer for Southwestern. It was amazing. And I think the apex of it all happened right down here in Lufkin, Texas, and then in Longview, in two sectional meetings here in the North Texas District. 
I went down to, to present the needs of the college, as I always did. Brother Bridges was very good. Brother, Brother Bridges announced that I was there and that they wanted to present the school and have, and all of a sudden, that whole thing erupted into a, into a spirit of prayer. It, it went on. I don't know if I ever got to speak or not. It just went on and went on, and a tremendous, a tremendous spirit of prayer. And we closed that one down, went to Longview to the next section, same thing happened. To me, it was that dynamic move of the Spirit of God in intercessory prayer that brought all this to pass. I think my part in it was, I, I hope I did okay. Uh, you had a great part in it, uh, and the faculty and everybody on campus had a great part in it, but it wasn't anybody's doing. It was a spirit of prayer mm -hmm. and God answering prayer. And that's how this whole thing exploded. I mean, it just exploded numerically, financially, building-wise. I mean, it became an amazing mm -hmm. thing and became kind of a testimony to the entire movement. New upgrades for one of SAGU's oldest buildings are in the works this summer. That building is Savelle Hall, traditionally a co-ed dormitory. Some of the plans for Savelle include reconstruction of the floors by adding new carpet, fixing the drainage issues, and repainting the walls. The renovation of the dorm will be exciting, as SAGU is expanding its capacity for on-campus residents. At this point in the summer, it's still unclear whether Savelle will be ready for the fall semester. We'll keep you updated. Time now to go on safari. This week's video essay will showcase a piece by freshman Alyssa Hutzel. Alyssa is a worship arts major involved in a variety of different activities, including Sagu Theater. Alyssa takes us back into her past through her poem, At Least I Had a House. In this video, we explore the challenges of being raised in a broken home. Dear parents, thank you for a house. Some people don't have a house, so thank you for the house. I've never had a home, but I always had a house. The house was filled with yelling, fighting, fear, hiding, alcohol, and strangers. But at least I had a house. I would take my dogs and hide in the closet of my room. There we would be safe at times, though I was still scared in that closet. But at least I had a closet and a room. I tried to make my room a happy place, but it just became my hiding place. The worst part was the forced smile, forced silence, not being able to tell anyone. Not my other family, friends, pastors, counselors, no one. Therefore, I talked to my dogs and stuffed angel dog. I can say all these things and still just hear your voice saying, at least you had a home. And that's where you're wrong. I had a house, never a home. Maybe one day I could have a home, a place where I am safe, happy, loved, free, and loud. Maybe I will get that, or maybe I won't. Maybe I will never have a home till I get to heaven. Maybe heaven will be my only happy place, while everywhere else is my hiding place. I may never have a home, but at least I had a house. Thanks for watching episode three of Lions in the Field. On behalf of our team of student producers from the Digital Media Arts Program and our executive producer, Rick Bowles, thanks again for watching. And remember, for every SAGU line in the field, your, your story, story starts, starts here. here.